Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome back to a month long study of the wide world of soy and the uses of soy milk in various techniques with our natural dyes. So we've been using soy as a binder in general to work with food scrap dye sources in our kitchen. Then we looked at soy milk as a way to make designs or prints on fiber, either as a paint itself or combined for a resist paste with lime. All of those created ways in which we could help natural color bind better with fiber. Today, we are going to take that one step further, and that is we're going to add color in the way of earth pigments. So get out your shovel, go find yourself some color out in that dirt, and let's get to making some more prints using soy as the binder. So far in Color Quest, we haven't looked much at earth pigments as a way in which to invite natural color into our worlds. It has been almost exclusively botanical or organic colors, but inorganic color exists as well. And you may know them in the painter's world as things like umber and ochre. Earth pigments can be used with fiber, but you have to do some different things in order for the two to bind. We did have one video here where we looked at red oxide in dirt that I had collected in Colorado to make some shibori tide designs. And in that, we used soy milk as our binder. So today, we're actually going to turn some of these earth pigments into paint itself and paint designs onto our fiber. So let's take a look at the earth pigment that we're gonna to use today. Now, of course, you can go out like I did and forage for earth pigments, but there is a company that I've been using for a while called Natural Earth Paints. I have been using their pigments for different art projects that I work on. And as you can see, they're well loved. Now, ochre and umber and sienna are all colors you probably well know if you are a painter, but you can see that there are so many different colors, ultramarines of blue and purple, even red, Venetian red, as well as terra verde. You can tell I've used all my green, so we won't be using green. But in essence, there is a rainbow of earth pigments available. What I like about natural earth paint is that they have produced these to be as non-toxic as possible, and they market them to be used for working with children's projects. So I have felt really good about how they have sourced their pigments and they've got such a great range of color. So this is what we're gonna work from today. Since I've been working with tea, I'm actually just gonna stick in the brown realm and probably look at the burnt sienna. You should go to their website and check it out and learn more about what they're doing and different ideas that they have for using natural earth pigments in your practice. Now, I first learned about using soy milk with earth pigments when I went to a free workshop at a local museum and they had combined earth pigments with soy milk as a binder in order to do simple paintings. Let me show you some samples that I made from that event. And that is what pushed me to explore more to see how I could use it with fiber other than paper. Here are some of the colors that we had as samples, and they actually had some expanded colors as well. They had apricot ochre, they had Maya blue. I actually was given some Maya blue when I was working down in Mexico, so I might have to try that out soon. Venetian red again, and then the ochres, umbers, 
and look at those colors now i made this sample sheet about two years ago so it's pretty remarkable it obviously works quite well and here's another just fun little paint swatches that i made from all of these and it was nothing more than soy milk and the earth pigment combined if you're a painter you know there are all kinds of binders out there in order to take a powdered substance or a pigment and turn it into a usable paint whether that is watercolor or oil paint and soy milk is one of them so we're going to be using soy here because we know that the binding power of soy and fiber in textile works so we are going to do a double prep and that is that our fiber is going to be pre-treated in a soy milk solution and then after that dries and cures we are going to mix up some soy milk paints if you will using the pigments and the soy milk and then paint our polka dot designs keeping with the tradition of the last few weeks and rounding out the cotton napkin designs that I've made so far. The process can be done with store-bought soy milk. Just you always want to make sure that it's unsweetened and preferably organic so you know you're just getting soy. However, there is a school of thought that would say that homemade soy milk is better. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to make that. But if you don't have the time or the energy, feel free to grab yourself some unsweetened organic soy milk from the grocery store. Let's make our soy milk first. Now I keep my soy milk that I buy from the grocery store in the fridge for a long time. I've been told that homemade soy milk can last in this environment in your fridge for approximately two weeks. I've also read that soy milk goes bad in a day. So use your best judgment and your nose to decide if the soy milk is still good, but know that you can potentially keep this soy milk for use across a week or two of natural dye projects. Your paint can also last if it's kept airtight and in the fridge for at least two weeks. And again, you'll have a good sense when you open it up if it's still viable to use as paint. I try to make as little as possible in one time so that I don't have to store anything but know that if you have extra you can keep it for a while and then potentially use it at a future date for another painting project. There is a very long process of using a soy milk as a binder for your fiber. I have pre-treated the cotton that I'm using in this solution but unlike the videos where i have shown it to where it will go through multiple dips and cures in between this process i simply left the fiber in the soy milk for approximately an hour then i wrung out the excess soy milk and hung it to dry you will want it 
to completely dry and preferably cure at least overnight before you start using that. Your fiber then has that protein bond on it so that when you begin to paint with your soy earth pigment paint, the soy that's binding the earth pigment will help the earth pigment bind with the soy on the fiber itself. We are using the magic of protein. There is a chemical reaction happening, which I cannot explain, but it makes good sense to me that protein can be a wonderful binding option. And soy milk is exactly that. For the earth pigment paint, it's going to be one teaspoon of pigment to two tablespoons of soy milk. You will want to make sure that it is well blended and mixed up so you have no lumps. You can always add a little bit more soy or a little bit more pigment to find a consistency that works for you. In addition, if you're finding that you want it to be more paste-like, you can choose some binders like Gum Arabic or Gum Tragacanth, known as Gum Trag, because that word is really hard to say. And you can even move into Guar Gum, all plant-based thickeners that you can add if you want to make your pigment paint thicker like a paste. It is all up to you. It's what you prefer and the effect that you want on your fiber. All right, I've decided I'm gonna use burnt sienna. I'm looking at the last two napkins that I made over the last few weeks, and I like this color for it. And so we're going to simply put in a teaspoon of the pigment and two tablespoons of soy milk. Now when we are printing on fiber, we want to make sure that the fiber doesn't move while we're working with it. And in order to do that, I've created my own homemade printing pad. It is nothing more than some firm foam and some canvas over the top, and then I put a piece of fiber in between just to protect the canvas. I'm using it as a sort of barrier fiber to protect the canvas and the printing pad so I can continue to use that time and time again. I can then just take that barrier cloth and wash it and reuse it. And then I simply can stretch and pin my fiber to the top of that printing pad. I showed more about that in a video a few weeks ago, so feel free to go back and look at that. You can certainly invest in some kind of a printing pad, but I made mine with approximately $10 worth of equipment and just cut and taped and stapled it together myself. So get creative out there. If you've got the resources or already own a printed pad, fantastic. If you do not have the time, energy, resource to do that, you can always simply stretch and tape your fiber down to the surface you're working on. What's nice about having some kind of a pad or foam underneath is that it has a little bit of give. And since we're going to be pressing into it, it will allow for the earth pigment soy paint to saturate the fiber, go through to the other side. It just gives us that little bit of bounce and cushion that will help us with the printing process. I also made little tiny printing pads using the same materials in order to have a blotting space. And the reason for that is as I use this paint and get familiar with it, I'm going to want to have a space where I can happily dab and blot and just get it to where I feel that the amount of paint on my brush is what I want on my finished fiber. So again, all homemade, nothing fancy, and it will just help you get more comfortable with working with paint on fiber and feeling confident that the prints that you're going to be making are going to be the way you want it to turn out. So here is my little baby blotting 
pad. It's the same build, just using a little bit of that cosplay firm foam, putting some canvas over it. And then I actually covered this with a little bit of plastic just because then I can wipe it off after I use it. Now, as I work with it, however, I'm going to place a piece of cloth just over the top of it. And this will be the cloth that I use to blot my sponges to get just the right amount of paint on it. You can see this was used before, actually, and you can then pull this off, wash it, and use it again and again. This is just an old cotton sheet, so super simple. So let's start printing. So you can see here areas where it bled into the surrounding area and that is going to happen if your paint is relatively thin. This may be where you decide you want to put some gum trag or gum arabic in and you can see that some had a little bit more pigment in it. So I could have kept stirring that, but I don't mind it being different like this. I'm a big fan of differences. So it's not gonna be this perfect polka dot, but it's gonna look organic. So we're gonna let this completely dry. I could pick it up off of the fiber right now and hang it, but I'll probably just leave it here. And then it's got to cure for about a week before I do anything to it. So I'm not gonna wash it. So we'll let this dry and then we'll take a look at it. Here is the final dried result. Each of these dried in a really beautiful way. There's some variation. As you can see, some of the pigments were much thicker than others. And that's because I pressed my brush into the bottom and picked up more of it. But that also just creates a really nice variation. I love these kinds of marks. I actually had used a smaller sponge started to bleed so I used a larger sponge and it still bled anyway <laughs> but I really like those it's super pretty if you wanted it to be a more tight line I would have had to add some of the other binding materials like the guar gum or the gum arabic because this is just because the liquid was thinner and so that was some of the soy paint that bled out. I really like it. I like the way it turned out. 
Now this has to sit for about a week before you do anything with it so that the pigment and soy mixture can cure. You can then hand wash it and dry it out. The pigment will stay on the fiber. Over time you might see it fade as you do with many natural colors, but this should have some good lasting power here with the soy on the fiber as well as the soy as the binder for the pigment itself. So let's quickly look at what we did last week as a comparative. So this was the soy lime paste resist that we did. And then the week prior, we worked on a simple soy milk paint where we just used soy milk as the way of creating these prints. Now I have these three beautiful pieces of cotton napkin that I can use. And I think they look great together. <laughs> so there you have it. Three different ways in which you can use soy beyond a simple mordant style binder for fiber. And also working in ways in which you can invite design into your dye practice is always a fun addition. It gives you many different options in creating beautiful pieces of artwork on fiber. Now, next week, I'd like to look at a, another way to create a design pattern using a different earth-based mordant, and that is iron. So I hope you will join me as we explore the power of ferrous sulfate as a way to make designs on fiber. Have a great week. Join me next Friday at Color Quest. Share the good word with your natural dye friends. Give this video and any video you like a thumbs up, put comments, down below, ask me questions, I answer everything. Love to connect with all of you. I will see you next time on Color Quest. Or gum tragathan, tragac, tragacant, gum trag, tragacanth, or gum tragacanth.